Okay, so in this series, we're going to look at how to make a cooking food prep time management game. So the basic setup is that you are in a food cart. Customers will come up to the cart and an image will appear next to them showing what they would like to order. So maybe it's a hot dog with ketchup. Maybe it's a hamburger with mustard. Maybe they want a soda and fries on the side. So that's the basic setup. Most of the models I'm going to use are from Paint 3D. Paint 3D is a free-to-use application from Microsoft. It comes built in with Windows 10. So let's start with that. Let's start by importing the graphics. So when you create a model in Paint 3D, it's important that you then use the file menu to export the file specifically as an FBX. So let's go ahead and open the folder where I save those. So as you can see, bun bottom, bun top, burger patty, cheese, crate, and ketchup, they all have that FBX extension. So make sure you're exporting it as an FBX. And then you just take that and you drag it into the asset area. If you notice, not only does it bring in the model, it also creates these folders holding the textures and materials and other relevant information. Okay, so that starts with what we need. So the crate is going to be for where the various supplies are stored. So there's going to be like a crate, a crate for each supply. So like one will have the hamburgers, one will have the buns. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a slightly different approach than what we normally do with these. I tend to do like a full layout and go step by step like that. In this case, I think I'm going to show you some of the functionality and then modify it to have it uh, be in the final layout. I find that there is a drop off between the first and the second video, and I think some of the setup uh, may discourage people. So this way you can see some of the functionality right to begin with. So when you create a new project, you're not seeing it from the camera's point of view. This is actually pointing, um, you're actually facing towards the camera. So you don't have to, but if you want, you can rotate this around. You're not actually moving the camera itself. You're just moving, for want a better term, the director's camera. So you can position the point of view behind the camera. That way it's closer to what the actual final project is going to look like. So, as we said that along the bottom, there's going to be crates, and those crates are going to have your supplies. So, before we do anything, Paint 3D, for some reason, makes the objects really, really small, at least when using the default size. So, what I notice is that these individual models have to get scaled. So, see how it's scale factor 1? You're going to have to increase that. For all these other ones, I had to increase it to 200. We'll see if crate needs to be increased as much. So just one at a time, we'll go increase the scale factor 200. And depending on what you do, what you use, you may not have to do this step. I just want you to understand why I'm doing this step. Okay, so all the models have been increased in size now. Now, keep in mind, this is just the model. When you put it into the environment, what's going to happen is it then has other objects, uh, excuse me, other components attached to it. So it's going to have like a transform component. It's going to have, uh, if you add a rigid body for uh, to add physics, or if it's going to have a collider also for, uh, as the name would suggest, collisions. So this isn't the final 
object that you're going to use. This is just the 3D model. So what's eventually going to happen is you're going to see these, and then you're going to see seemingly duplicates of them, which have those additional components attached to them. And then those would be referred to as prefabs. And that is, it's something that you can instantiate over and over again. So these will get used once to create the um, object, but then it's the prefab that we'll actually use uh, throughout the game. So let's start by putting our crates along the bottom. So let's take one, put it into the scene, and that made it appear, let's put it at zero for the moment. We'll have to slide this over to the left. Let's put this at zero, and we'll put this at zero. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it looks kind of distant. We also would want it to be uh, larger. So let's bring it closer. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing that Z axis and I bring it forward. And then we're also going to slide it over. Okay, over a little bit too much. Okay, so probably a little bit too big actually because wouldn't be able to fit four of those or five of those. So let's see. So what we're going to do is we can just scale this down a bit. So let's make this, well, actually, those numbers are really small. So let's change the source crate. So if we make this smaller, then that will also change. So we'll make this like 150. As you can see, it got smaller because this is the source of that. And that's better. So now we can slide this over more. Perfect. That was lined up nice. And just so you know, you don't actually have to run it. You can just click on the camera and you get a preview down here. So whatever works for you. So let's just lower this on the screen a little bit. So we'll push that down a tiny bit more. And it looks like that's lined up pretty good. Maybe up just a touch. So I'll scroll in a little bit, grab that y-axis arrow. So now, as I said, this is just the model. This is what we're actually going to use. So let's take this. We're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it. Slide it over. Copy, paste, slide it over. As you can see, I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not leaving. I'm not actually measuring the space. You certainly can come over here to the transform component and make it an even distance. Mainly, it's, or should I say, it's exclusively the X position that you're changing. So if you watch up here, when I move the X arrow, it's only that axis because you're not moving it up and you're not moving it towards the screen. You really would want these lined up. Now, for some reason, you want this to be say uh, like five across and two deep, then yes, you would have to change the z-axis because in that case, you'd be pushing it into the center of the screen. Now, technically, I could have waited before I duplicated the crate. And the reason for that is each one of these are going to have click functionality because you're going to click on this to make something appear. Like, for instance, you're going to click on this for a hamburger to appear on the grill. You're going to click on this for a hot dog to appear on the grill. You're going to click on this for a hamburger bun to show up in uh, on the breadboard or whatever, the cutting board. So uh, what I'm getting at is that to make that happen, there's going to be other, uh, uh, as I said, other components added to these objects, but it's easy enough to add a component to multiple objects at the same time. Now let's just get rid of the numbers here. And the reason why it zoomed in is I double clicked a little bit too fast. So if you ever need to zoom in on something, you can just double click. Actually, let's do that. And again, double click for the win. Sorry about that. So I'm just clicking twice and changing 
it to crate. And these will probably eventually be renamed to like um, patty bin, bun bin, or hamburger bun bin, that kind of thing. And this zooming is just using the scroll wheel. So let's run that so we can see how that looks. So that one's clipped a little bit. So a couple things we can do. Can make them a little bit smaller, but I think we'll just kind of shrink the distance or adjust the distance, I should say, rather than shrinking the object. Okay. It's clipped a little bit, but doesn't have to be perfect at this point. This is, again, as I've said in my other tutorials, this is an iterative process. You create a proof of concept, you come up with a prototype, and you say it works, then you go back and you refine. Okay, so we have that. Now, if you want, you certainly could put some of the buns in here, some of the patties in here, that kind of thing. I don't think that's really necessary at this point. I think that would be more of a distraction from what we're really trying to do. So we have our crates where the uh, food is going to be stored. Now what do we want? Well, we need a grill for it to cook on and a, um, a cutting board for where, say, you're going to put the buns. So let's make those internally to um, access. Uh, sorry to Unity. So let's go to 3D object, let's go to cube. Let's scale this vertically down to like 0.2. And eh, even that's kind of much. Let's see, let's slide that down to see how that compares inside. Yeah, let's make that like 0.1. We'll grab the Y axis, push this over, and make this maybe a scale of two along the X so that way it's wider. Take a look to see how that looks. Okay. Well, I'm thinking that we might have to change the camera angle because this is where the buns are going to be cooking, or we can just put it at an angle, but putting it at an angle is an issue if we're using gravity. So let's see if we can just roll the camera. There's actually a red line. That's the axis that I'm rolling this uh, over. You can see here it's changing. And now, let's lift it up. There we go. So I'm going to click on that again, and we'll just make this a little bit deeper then. So the Z, let's make it 1.5. All right, that's good enough for now. So we now have a grill, and technically we could push this over to the side. In fact, we're probably going to have to bring this down because we need counter space at the top. So we'll just pull that in. And again, this doesn't have to be created in Unity, if you can find a grill, whether you make one externally or there's one that's pre-existing that you have permission to use, um, don't have to create it internally. But it gives me an example to show you how materials work. So let's go to right click, create material. And we'll just call this grill metal. So this isn't going to be a full-on material tutorial, but it will show you the basics. So what we're going to do is first thing, so with the material selected, we're going to change this to like a gray color. So you go to a typical color picker here. We're just going to choose like a gray. And then what we're going to do is for metallic, we're going to take this slider. We're going to push this over. Watch how this changes down here. You can see... Looks more like a pinball now. And you can also have smoothness. So if you want it to be really shiny, you can do that. So now it looks, again, more like a pinball. Or you can make it like a brushed dull. If you make it, if you remove the smoothness, it kind of e eliminates the metal appearance to it. So 
uh, choose whatever you think fits best. Okay, so now you can just drag and drop it onto that, and let's run it. Okay, so it doesn't look particularly shiny, but there's not much around it to reflect right now. So, what else are we going to do? We are going to create a breadboard, or a, I keep calling it a breadboard, like a cutting board. So, let's again go to Game Object, 3D, Cube, and we'll take a similar setting. We'll do scale of, say, 2, and make this 0.15. And now we're going to line these up. Zoom in a little bit. Since these, this has the same vertical um, uh, scale sorry, as this one, you could use the same vertical position. Uh, so this one is a vertical of 0 0.202. Let's just change that to 0 0.20 for the moment, which means this could also be 0.2, negative actually. Why? Because we started with the same object and modified it. Okay. So I don't... So that one's also negative 5.8z. So we'll do this similar negative 5.8. Actually, oh, this was 0.1. This one's 1.5. Uh, so I was wondering why what I said wasn't true. There we go. So now. Negative 0.2, negative 0.2. So now these really should be lined up. Yeah, they are. Okay. So that's going to be the breadboard. So let's go into the crate and see if we can just use that same wood texture. Yeah, that's good. Ideally, you'd probably want to have a different one, but it's a little bit better than look at than just the blank slate. Okay, so that gives us our layout. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start adding the functionality where if you click on something, it will appear. So if you click on the bun, it will appear. If you click on the hamburger, it will appear.